Welcome to the LHA Church Podcast. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the message today. For more information about this podcast and other resources, visit lhachurch.com. Happy Mother's Day. My mom isn't feeling well today, so she couldn't be here, so I'll see her later. But happy Mother's Day to my mom, who my mom um, made Christianity fun and interesting to me. And I was saved when I was four, and just I haven't always been perfect, but I've been in the game and loved God. I've never stopped loving God. Um, and a lot of that has to do with my mom and dad. My dad's here, so I can't give mom all credit, but it is Mother's Day. So you'll get more credit on Father's Day. <laughs> but my mom is a godly woman who taught me how to love the word and to love God. And I just love her to death. And she's so fun and wonderful. She's artistic and great. So I say happy Mother's Day, Mom. And I say happy Mother's Day to my awesome mother-in-law who is recovering from pneumonia, which I kind of think she still might have a little bit of it in there. So don't, if you're sick, don't breathe on her. <laughs> don't make her more sick. And, you know, I was thinking about you this morning, Doris, and I was thinking, and I know I've said it before, um, you are, to me, the role model of a mother-in-law. There's so many jokes that people make about mother-in-law jokes and on and on. You have been the polar opposite of that. You've always been kind and loving and caring and concerned about me. Anytime I don't feel good when she's on the phone with Jerry, how's Paula? How's Paula? I mean, even if it's just the sniffles, how's Paula? How's Paula? And okay, you've always been. And, and um, when I thought of you and my mom, I was thinking of two godly women who have been through many trials and um, still have um, loved Jesus and that, to me, is the best testimony ever. So happy Mother's Day to you. <laughs> and I wouldn't be a mom if I didn't have one son who, after I had one of perfection, I didn't have any more. <laughs> so, just, oh, who I always tell him, so happy birthday, Tyler. <laughs> happy birthday. What did I say that for? <laughs> happy... <laughs> I just want to point out that I'm the worship leader. <laughs> I am not the preacher. <laughs> well, I may as well make a verbal mistake early. <laughs> I love you. That will do. <laughs> He's my world. That's all there is to it. He and I are exactly the same in so many ways. And I've always joked with him and said that we both should wear a t-shirt that says, you're not telling me, I'm telling you. And he, he should wear a shirt, not telling me, I'm telling you. And like, mm, I'm, I'm the mom, I'm telling you. And he'd be like, mm, yep. We joke about that a lot. Anyway, I love you. You light up the room when you come in. I tell you that all the time. And of all the 26-year-olds in the whole wide world, if you lined them all up, I would narrow it down to two or three. I would always pick you. You're perfect to me. I love you. And happy birthday in July. Where <laughs> <laughs> did come from? That needs to go in the books of weird things you say. Well, now I'm all nervous. That made me nervous. <laughs> okay, so I want to say, too, I haven't said it yet. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And um, I... Goodness. This is really bad timing. Just a minute, I'll be back. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're just crying and crying and crying and crying. Oh, they're there. They're, please stop crying. I need to preach. Okay. Awkward timing. Okay. Well, you're not crying very loudly, are you? They're there. They're, they're there. It's okay. It's okay. Shh, stop crying. I, okay. Shh, stop crying. I'm going to need you to stop crying. Hey, I, you're not. Nope. It's not that. I have already fed you. I have already, I don't, I've done everything I know to do for you. Please stop crying. 
You've been crying for hours and hours and hours. And, and I have everything you need. Why are you still crying so loudly? And you could cry louder. That's terrible. Oh, 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 there, there. Oh, maybe you have a terrible belly ache. Maybe you do. That's going to be a big man one day. <laughs> woman, woman one day. <laughs> well, that wasn't it either. Well, I don't know why you're crying so much. Now I feel like crying. Please stop crying. Please stop crying. Please stop crying. Please stop crying. Cry. It's okay. It's okay. It's, hey, hey. Okay. Okay, maybe if I lay you down, maybe if I lay you down, that will help. Maybe if I lay, maybe if I lay you down, I'm laying you down. Okay, I'm laying you down. You're gonna stop crying. Here you go. There, I laid you down. Okay. Oh, it worked. Okay. Okay, I laid you down. Shh. Okay. So. That never works. <laughs> okay. I need you to stop. You know what? Aunt Faith is coming over. And Aunt Faith is coming. And whenever Aunt Faith comes, she can always make you stop crying. So Aunt Faith should be here any minute because you're crying so loudly. Aunt Faith is coming. There she is. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe you can take and then don't drop her. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. 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 Try to make the baby stop crying. I love you. Okay. 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 All right. Good luck. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to go lay down. Bye bye. Okay, it's not stopping. It's not stopping. I, uh, uh, oh. 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 Have you ever felt like as a mom that you could not get your baby to stop crying? I'm not the only one, right? And they, they wake up in the middle of the night, and it doesn't matter what you do. They just cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, pause. I need to pause, and I getting ready to cry myself. <laughs> Let's pray for a second. Lord, we love you so much today. Lord, I just pray a blessing, God, over these scriptures in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that, Lord Jesus, as we listen, God, to your voice and how wonderful you are and your word, God, that's so great that our hearts would be changed today. Lord, as we are held in your arms and as we are carried in your presence, can you pray with me all across the house? Lord, I pray you would open my ears to hear your word today. We pray that over your own life. And Lord, God, I pray that you would open my spiritual eyes, God, to see, God, what it is you want me to see today and to hear what it is you want me to hear. And God, I pray that I as a vessel, God, would decrease, God, and that you would increase in the room in the name of Jesus. God, I just pray, Lord, that today, God, your voice would be the loudest voice in the entire room. In the name of Jesus, amen. Every single person in this room was held as a baby. Say the word held, H-E-L-D, held. Held means to grasp, to carry, to support, to sustain, to embrace, to hug, to enfold, and able to bear. We were all held as babies. It calms us down. A baby that is not held will not thrive. And even research has been done to say that babies that are not physically held can literally die or even develop mental illnesses. Babies that are not held by their parents will even stop growing 
And like I said, worst case scenario, even die. A baby only knows to cry, just like that little baby I was holding, only knows to cry. They can do nothing for themselves, nothing, nothing. Think about that for a second. The only thing a baby can do for itself is to cry out and is to cry. The parent has everything the baby needs, everything. The parent has food. The parent's able to change the baby. The parent is able to um, take care of the baby, wrap the baby up when it's cold. Uh, I remember with Tyler, I would bundle, 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 and bundle, and bundle him like a little burrito. <laughs> and he would just sweat. He'll sweat. I need, I need no baby sweat. And I'd be like, oh, I probably got you too. But it looks so cute. I'll bundle like that. <laughs> Parents know how to take care of a baby. And when you were a baby, that's what happened to you. Now, I'm going to say some things today, and in our culture, they would really go against the grain of things you hear on TV. So when I say certain things, I'm not making sweeping generalizations. But for me to say that the women are usually the nurturers in the family, I'm not saying that a man can never do that. You know, there's lots of men that can feed the child and do all, all the things. But it kind of seems like over all of time, that the mother is the one, the mother initially feeds the child from her own body, um, even in animals. And the mother tends to be the one that when, that when the little kid falls and scrapes his or her knee, who do they run to? They usually run to mom, mom. And dad's like, suck it up, you know. <laughs> you're, you're, it's all right, y'all right, y'all right. Get up, get up. And the mom's like, oh, your arm is yours broken. And it's like the tiniest little cut, you know. Um, a mom is usually the nurturer. And like I said, that's not a sweeping generalization. So if you're the dad in the room who is taking care of your children and doing a great job, that's awesome. But normally it kind of is like that. The women have a side to them that a man doesn't always have. Together, the Bible says the two become one, and they make exactly what the child needs. I do know, be careful not to hear something that I'm saying that I'm not saying. I do know that the Bible says that God is our Father. And I do know, I, I love the word. I do know that the Bible uses male pronouns for every time it talks about God. I firmly know that Jesus himself referred to his father. I also know that when God chose to come onto the earth in incarnate form of human, he was chosen as a man who had a male name, Yeshua, what we know is Jesus. I know all of that. But God being the father is not like a human father. The Bible says in Genesis that God made male and female in his image. Now, before you put the brakes on completely and listening to me, he is not like you. He is God. He is the great I am. One of the descriptions that's used in the Bible, especially associated around Abraham, he is called El Shaddai, which means almighty. It also means the strong-breasted one, meaning that in God is an eternal supply to nourish you and to be everything that you need. This concept will rub certain males in the room because you don't want to think of any aspect that God has as leaning to that of feminine. And I wouldn't even use those words. What I'm telling you is, you need all of God. El Shaddai also means he is the nurturer. He is the one who holds. He is the one who comforts. In Isaiah, this is our main verse for today. In Isaiah 30 and verse 15, it says, in repentance... And rest is your salvation. And quietness and trust is your strength. And that is a beautiful verse. And many people quote it, including myself, um, to try to live by. You know, quiet down. I'm not strong when I'm all harried and chaotic. I'm strong when I'm trusting Jesus. 
The last part of that verse says, but you would have none of it. So let's read it again. And repentance and rest is your salvation. And quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. The Bible says that when we come to Jesus, we come to him as a little child. You don't come to him as an arrogant adult, not needing anything. It's easier, listen to me, it's easier many times in our world to receive the Father's love when we're older. But it's hard, I mean your Father's love or a Father's love, but it's harder to receive a mother's love. So I'll just give you a couple examples. When you reach a certain age, boys are very embarrassed by their mothers. <laughs> they don't want her over hugging, over kissing, over anything. <laughs> And you get to a certain age as an adult that you don't need certain things that your mother did for you. Right? You don't need, I don't need to be held. I don't need you to coddle me. I don't need you to tell me everything. I'm my own person. I don't need you to baby me. I don't need you to, uh, I, I don't need you to treat me like that. I don't need you to, to be, you're treating me like a baby. I, I don't need you to hold me. I don't, that's not... That's how we are raised, and every one of us is like that. But the problem happens is when we put that over into our Christianity, and we easily accept that God is our Father, He's our strong Father, but we refuse from Him rest and peace and being held and being carried because those qualities we don't need anymore. Do you get where I'm coming from? But I want to know in the word what God thinks is important, not what I think is important or what you say is important. What does God say is important? And being held, being carried is very important to God. You allowing him to do that. See that little baby? I did that little goofy little skit with that little doll. Thank you, Amy, for bringing me a doll. I had a boy. I don't know how many dolls. <laughs> Okay, I might have a couple myself, but they weren't. <laughs> they weren't apropos for them. Thank you. In that, that baby did not understand that mommy has everything it needs. All it understood was, way, my stomach hurts. Way, I need this. Way, I'm hungry. Way, I need this. Way, I'm tired. And the parent logically is going, you're changed, you're fed, you're held, you're warm, you're everything. What else do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Because, but you are not that little baby anymore. And God has given us his word to say, I am. Am and I want to be your everything, including holding you and carrying you during hard times. But the scripture says, but you would have none of it. Well, what wouldn't they have none of? They didn't want his repentance. They did not want his rest. They could have cared less about quietness and trust. And they wanted to do everything in their own strength. And God notices. Matthew 23 and verse 37 Jesus looks out over Jerusalem and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who are sent to you, how often, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. In both of these verses, God is saying, this is what I want to do. This is what I have available for you. This is who I am. This is who I want to be in your life. And in both verses, God is saying, but you won't let me do it. You are a baby who cannot be comforted. I have everything, and all you do is cry, and I'm the one who wants to help you. We live in a culture that is like this. We live in a culture of crying babies and people that go to counselors, nothing wrong with counselors, and people that look for everything and are addicted to everything, drink only to soothe, drugs to only make things disappear, eat only to uh, solve depression. We live in a society that God is not the almighty breasted one to this society and to our culture. 
God is over there and I don't need you anymore. I don't need to be held by you. I don't need to be carried by you. And because we live in a culture that says I don't need to be fed by you or carried by you, we live in a culture that limps along and that has stopped growing spiritually and that is ultimately dying. And if you think I'm wrong with that, it only takes watching the television for five minutes to figure it out. We need God and we need all of God. When Jesus came to the earth, he came during a time that we don't understand because we live in America. And so we think, we, we associate, I don't say you do it, a lot of times I think I do it, associate all, all I know. This is all I know. Who I feel Holy Spirit. When Jesus came to the earth at the time, remember the story of when he was born, Herod, and he was called Herod the Great. He was called, Her- he was king at the time over Israel. But there was never to be a king over Israel that was not from the line of David. Herod was a king over Israel in a, um, how do you say that in a, oh, my language, not, not right. It, it, he didn't come through the line. When Herod heard about Jesus, Herod had his own wife murdered He had two of his own children strangled. Caesar Augustus said he was a villainous monster. And under his tyrannical rule, everyone should be afraid. And because he gained the kingship um, out of order and, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Not right. Um, Unlawfully. (laughs) It wasn't right. He was mega paranoid of somebody coming in to take his kingship. Very similar to Moses and Pharaoh. And when the seers and astrologers told Pharaoh about Moses, the deliverer is already in the womb. Well, he had them killed. And it's the same way that happened in Jesus' time. When the astrologers, he called for the seers. And and even at that time, they were were the Sanhedrin then and called seers. They got called in and and he asked, who is this? Remember, they they went by and the, the wise men said, where is the one? And we went to worship him. Well, that made him like, ooh, paranoid city. And so he said, well, what are they talking about? And they were afraid to tell him because they knew what happened that everybody else that did anything that crossed his path, they got killed. Well, they told him, and remember what he did? He said, let's kill all the babies, two years old, all the boys. Same thing back with Moses. That's a whole prophetic sermon in itself. <laughs> But he had all of them killed. This is, this is the nation that, that Jesus was born into. Herod was so horrible that he tortured and imprisoned anybody that disagreed with him. Um, he was known for that. Well, remember in this story about Jesus, remember it said that Herod died, so they were going to go back. And then they heard about his son. And so they went then to Nazareth, which we know the Bible says is why he was called Jesus from Nazareth. Herod had a son named, son named Archelaus. And so the, Israel, the people of Israel thought, well, surely he won't be as bad as his dad. So all of the pilgrims go to, go to worship at, now this is like Jesus, little bitty, like two, three-year-old, little, little bitty Jesus. All of the pilgrims go to worship Jerusalem for the Passover. And they start saying to Archelaus, they thought, well, your horrible dad, Herod, is dead. Surely you're not going to be this horrible. And they all go there for the pilgrimage and meet for the Passover. And while they're there at the temple worshiping, he calls in guards and kills 3,000 of them. He was way more wicked than his father. This is the time that Jesus came into. After that, there was no king in Israel. During Jesus' lifetime, there was no king. There was only governors. He was born into a time of of just extreme chaos going on. Rome had even taken over Israel. Israel was God's chosen people. So when Jesus said out loud, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have taken you into my arms. They didn't want him. Listen to me. Our nation doesn't want him. They don't want Jesus. 
They don't want what he is. And Jesus Christ, God on the earth, said, I would have taken you into my arms. I have longed to do it. And I'm telling you today, God is longing to bring you into his arms. He says, I longed to bring you into my arms and to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but you are not willing. At that time, the disciples, remember the disciples said, are you coming to set everything right and to make the kingdom the way? And he's like, no, I'm bringing a different kingdom. I'm bringing the ultimate kingdom. They thought he was coming just to help in that time frame to make everything right. But he says, I'm coming to make everything new. Well, I grew up in Gas City. So I'm going to say I'm a city girl as far as Gas City goes. Not like New York or something, but Gas City. We didn't have hens or chickens. I don't know what they really do. So I read a little bit about them. And maybe you know, and maybe later you'll tell me more, but I'll just give the best Hen and chick thing that I know. A hen. A hen will make special clicking sounds, different clicking sounds. I just keep feeling rushes of his Holy Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying doubly. Don't listen to just what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying that has to do with God. A little hen will make clicky sounds and make different ones to call her little chicks for whatever, to come eat, to get out of the way, to do something. They make a special little clicking sound for danger. And when they make that sound, they fluff out really big and they spread their, they spread, they spread their wings, <laughs> spread their wings out and all the little chicks come under and they cover them. They cover them so they themselves, if they're hurt or killed, I read two examples. One guy said that in a barn fire, he saw it. They click, 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 clicked the sound, and all the little chicks came, and the hen came down over them, and the mom was incinerated, but the babies weren't. The object of the hen gathering over is to protect and give its own life, if need be, to keep the little chicks safe. And another one was kind of funny and mean. This young guy, he said, he said that when he was a kid, he used to make like these forms that look like hawks on a stick, like a shadow. And he would shadow it. This is terrible. He would shadow it over the little hen on purpose to make it go poof. And, uh, <laughs> that's so mean. He said, but what he learned was, <laughs> poor thing, uh, what he learned was what they make a specific sound. And I'm telling you today that God has a voice in your life. And God is making a sound over your life because he's calling you to himself to protect you, to counsel you, to heal you, to comfort you. He says, I longed to do it. Isaiah 40 and verse 11 says, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. Sheep are used as an example over 500 times in the word. We are called sheep. He says, listen to the words that he has chosen to use. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. I have a kitty cat at my house and her name is Kitty. And that's true. That's true. That's true. Her name's Gracie, but we thought if we called it rapidly, it sounded like you were saying, oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. It's like, oh, Gracie, 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 Gracie. It's like you were saying, crazy, crazy, crazy. So, like, rapidly, like, so it just, when we called it like that, so we said, let's just call her Miss Kitty. So then it's Kitty, Kitty, Kitty. But I think maybe all kitties might come to that. I'm not totally sure. <laughs> but I pick up Miss Kitty. I pick her up. She's like a limp. I, she's so limp. I love her so much. I pick her up. And I always put her up right, right up here, and I hear her going, and I put her right up by my heart. And I bet she hears my heart thumping, and, and I'm all warm. I love her. You may not think you need this, but Jesus is saying to you today, what is lacking 
in your life is you allowing him to pick you up. Listen to me. You allowing him to pick you up and hold you close up to his heartbeat that says, I love you, love you in your good days, I love you on your hard days, I love you when you do right, I love you when you do wrong. If you resist the Father, this quality of nurturing you and pulling you close into him, then you will be like that baby, lacking. You won't be fed. You won't be nurtured. You'll always be hurting. In Isaiah 46, 4, he said, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. In the relationship that you have with Jesus, it is a covenant relationship. He does his part, you do your part. The Bible says that we are saved um, by grace through faith in believing in him, period. It's not in what you do. You can't achieve a salvation. You receive it as a free gift. Lord, I confess my sins to you. I need you. I believe on you, Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. And that is how, in your repentant heart, how you become born again. According to John 3, that is what the Messiah told Nicodemus, you must be saved, you must be born again. But then there comes this part of you that is the hardest part of all. And it is the part of yielding. It is the part of yielding every part of you to a God who wants to carry you. He doesn't want you to do it yourself. He couldn't care less how strong you are. He says that he is strong in your weaknesses and that mankind's strength is really nothing compared to him. So every time you try to do it on your own, you're just like one of those little sheep who wanders off into danger. You are not smart enough to even know what li- the danger that lies out in front of you. None of you are, including myself. But when we stay close to the shepherd and close to the master and we allow him to hold us and to carry us all the days of our life, we are kept from many things that we ourselves would have brought on by wandering away from him. I believe that you can be a Christian, live your whole life, and still be uh, not held and carried by him because you have rebellion and resistance still on the inside of you. There are some of you in the room that your personality just yields to the fact you are a strong individual. You are a leader mentality. You're not, you're the one telling people they're not telling you, you're telling them. But that does not go over with God. And God says, if you don't come to me for everything, if you don't come to me for every little thing, every big thing, everything, then in that area specifically, you will have lack and you will eventually have death in that area. You need Jesus and you need all of Jesus. He cries out to this church, to me and to all the believers in the room, just like he did that day, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I long to bring you in. I long to comfort you. I long to be everything that you need. You know, one day when it comes, you'll stand before Jesus all by yourself. I will not stand there on the coattails of my preacher husband. I will stand there, or nor on parents who raised me in a godly home. I will stand by myself for the choices I made and for what I did with my life. 
But I pray that when I stand there, he won't show me moments of time that I was like that little baby. I could not be consoled. I was so overwhelmed with worry. I was so overwhelmed with the cares of this life. I was an unsettled little baby crying. When he showed me, I have always, Paula, always carried you along. I have always been there with you. I was your God throughout your lifetime. But look at these windows, Paula, when you did it on your own. Look at these windows when you thought you were strong enough, when you didn't need me, when you didn't take time into my presence. Everything you needed that day, you could have had all of me all the time. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, can we say his name all across the house? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Being held by God happens in his presence. It happens in his presence. It happens in his presence. Yes, you pray in the car Pray at work, sing in the car, sing at work, commune with God constantly. That is your right because of the cross. It became your right. You did not have to go to the temple and bring a sacrifice. And the Bible says that only the high priest could go in and and into the most holy place. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil, which I think is six inches thick, I believe, was torn in two. When Jesus said it is finished on the cross, the veil was torn in two, not from bottom to top, so that maybe a person could have maneuvered it, but it was split from the top down to the bottom, meaning God took hold of it and ripped it and said, come in, come in, come into all of me, come into everything you need. Come in, I see your sin. Come in, I see your weakness. Come in, I see your ways. Come in, I see you for you who you really are. But come on in. See, they weren't qualified to go in before that. The Bible says that all the blood of bulls and goats and little pigeons, that it could never, never, ever uh, completely do away with all of mankind's sin. It only covered it for a while. But the blood of Jesus, he was the perfect, spotless, sinless, lamb died on the cross for your sins and we talk about it so much but what we may be missing is when he hung torturously on the cross he uttered out the words which were the same words the high priest would use when the sacrifice was made and it was done Jesus uttered out it is finished and it rang through all time for you it rang through every trial you face it rang through every sin you have and all he said is when he ripped the veil is come in come in with your sin to the mercy seat that you will receive mercy that you need come in and receive grace all you have to do is believe and then once you do it I'm telling you you have an enemy and Jesus says all you have to do is resist him And everything you need is in his presence. Are you having trouble with your finances today? He ripped the veil in two and said, come in and talk to me about it. Come in and find provision. Are you having trouble in your marriages today? He ripped the veil in two and said, rush into my presence. God can work a miracle in your finances and in your marriage and in your addiction in a second, in a split second from what no counselor can do. God, if one touch on your life can change you and absolutely renew you and move you into a new realm that super, like poof turbo more than any person could ever do. You need all of Jesus You need his mercy. You need his forgiveness because you cannot obtain it on your own. You need his love. You need his salvation. You need his joy because you can't bring up enough emotion to get joy going. You need his peace because you live on this earth. You need his salvation because you cannot be saved on your own. You will end up in hell. You have to have his salvation. 
Outside of Jesus, there is no salvation. There is no other name given under heaven to mankind that we must be saved. There is no peace at all that can be afforded you. Winds that blow of peace might come in your life, but you will never be truly at peace without Jesus. You may have moments of happiness or see funny videos, but outside of Jesus, there is no joy. Outside of Jesus, there is no gentleness. Outside of Jesus, there is no kindness. Outside of Jesus, there is no goodness. It doesn't matter how moral you are. It doesn't matter how moral your neighbor is. If you don't have Jesus, it is all found in Jesus. In his presence, in his presence is where we eat the word. It is the bread of life to us. It is living. It breathes when you open it. It is not like a novel that you read or a magazine. You open it, it breathes the breath of God and penetrates into your spirit to change you and renew you. It changes your mind about things. It causes you to yield and it causes you to be held and carried and it brings you into alignment with God. It brings you into alignment with God because you cannot align yourself. Only God can do it. When you pray, when you pray, it is an act of humility. They teased me on um, the vacation that we went on because I, I'm, I'm only a part-time seatbelt wearer. I confess it. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I wear it in the car where when I drive for some reason when we're the truck or the church van, I don't know. And they, they kept joking with me about it. One day, and it'll be after I wear my seatbelt more often. One day I would really hope to be able to preach a sermon to you and to myself. And it would be called, How Much Rebellion Are You Okay With? Because any area of in rebellion in our life, God is not okay with. God is not okay with praying, bowing, fasting, spending time in his words. Listen to me. Our Christian disciplines that in your natural self, you may never feel like it. If you don't do those things, you'll starve yourself. You won't drink from the living water that comes in prayer. You won't eat from the word that comes. You won't last. Jerry and I have been here 20, it'll be 20, it is 27 years now, isn't it? And we have seen people come and go. And I'm telling you today the secret to staying in with God. If you base it on your feeling, you won't. Because there's many days you won't feel God. You might go through times of your life that he is quiet. There are places in the word that he said he did that to test them to see where their heart really was. You'll go through times in your life where it feels like all you do is struggle uphill. And he is still a God we're serving. He is still a God we're trusting. You may have times in your life where it seems like everybody has left you and no one cares about you. God will never leave you. Ever, ever, never, ever. It is not within his ability to do that. Oh, Jesus. One of my dad's favorite scriptures is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's a good one. But we're not afraid of God in our nation. And we're not afraid of God as people. That there will come a day when I will stand before God and I'll answer I want you to hear me, mothers and grandmothers, because today's Mother's Day, and he'll talk to the fathers. <laughs> there, 
there will come a day as a mother that you'll answer for what you sowed into your child's life. If you have sown godly seed, listen to me, godly seed lives on forever. Every good seed that you've ever planted, I pray in the name of Jesus, it would come to life. Every good seed you ever sowed. If we ever needed a time in our nation when there were mothers that dragged their children to church, it's today. Because I'm telling you, the millennial generation and underneath uses church as an option. School is not an option. Toilet paper is not an option. Many things are not an option. But church and Christianity is an option. And if you are a mother, do not make the mistake of not bringing your child to church because they say out of rebellion, I don't like it. I don't want to go. You don't let them do that with school. You say, get your little clothes on, Joe, let's go. Oh, Joe, I didn't mean to use Joe. Hi, Joe, okay. <laughs> I just used Joe because it's a name, Joe. You don't do that with your children. Mothers, you will be held accountable. Speak the word over your children if they feel like they are gagging and choking on it. Speak the word over your children. <laughs> May you be known as a mother, not a mother who just knows all about the Hallmark Channel and a mother who knows about this and a mother who knows about that. May you be the biggest Bible-thumping mother on the planet. I pray that you would know the word and that it would be put on your tombstone. She is a woman of the word. She was a woman, is, however you want to say it, that you are that woman. Do not make that mistake and let your children talk you out of what they need as far as God goes. Give them, at, see, listen, we live in a generation that says, don't shove it down my throat. I don't need everything you say. I'll make up my own mind. That's fine. You make up your own mind when you get old enough and you're not in this house anymore. And even then, I'm not going to be any different. You'll hear the word of God pouring, pouring, pouring out of me until I stop talking. And when I stop talking and Jesus takes me home, guess what I'll be doing? Pouring and pouring love out on Jesus, pouring out worship. It's the woman I am. And it's the woman we need in this nation, more of them. We need more women who will say to their children, I'm sorry, you don't like all the youth group. I'm sorry, you don't like everything about church. It's boring. It's not your style of music. Get your clothes on anyway let's go I'm sorry I'm sorry you're sick of listening to me tell you Bible stories come on in here sit down listen to one more I'm sorry that you don't like praying sit there for 10 more minutes while I go on about God and you might say oh that's just a little too much Paula well I tell you what guys five minutes on the television five that's it they're gonna get a huge cram down their throat of gay talk language and every other demonic thing and if you are not on your game if you are not on your game and you don't have your sleeves rolled up nailing the devil at every turn then every friend they have everything that goes on you're just all this big jellyfish whatever 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 I just want to please you do not please listen to me and I'll get off my rant although I don't really call it a rant Do not please your child over God. Some of, there, there might even be some women in the room, you're pleasing your husband over God. There might be, I am submissive to him and I love him. He to me is everything. And you, you guys hear me say that all the time. I just gush, 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 gush. I just love Jerry. Mm, just kiss his face off. Mm. I just love him so much. If Jerry turned his back on God one day, that would have nothing to do with me. Nothing. Because I'll stand before God by myself. It is my eternal soul. He's not going to do that, though. <laughs> James chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Come close to God. And God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. 
purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided. Many mothers are intimidated of their own children. If I ever erred on the side of talking too much about God, that's probably not a bad thing. If you ever err on the side of being a little, praying a little too much and being a little annoying that way, that's not a bad thing. Because we have an enemy who is hot on its heels to get your children. And if you do not raise up a standard of prayer and you do not raise up a standard against the devil, who is going to do it? Who is going to do it? I've asked Colton to sing a song today before we close. And I asked him, I said, can you sing a song? Oh, Jesus. Being held happens. He said, it's the covenant thing. He said, come close to me and I'll come close to you. Snuggle up closer to me. I'll come close to you. The only different thing is that you do it a little bit. God does it a whole bunch. So you barely like take a small little step toward Jesus. And he does what the prodigal's father did. He rushes at you. I asked Colton to come and sing this song. And this was a song. This was a song. Uh, it's an old song. I asked him, I said, we sing a song on Mother's Day, and he said, yes, I'll try to find one. I said, no, I have one. (laughs) You're not telling me, I'm telling you. (laughs) That's funny. Um, This song I knew when I was a young girl, and it would always make me cry, and I would listen to it over and over again, because Jesus is saying to you, say, I'll let you talk, but, um, huh, that, um, the song is saying that it's from God to you, and then it later in the song answers back. And you may be like, well, that's a lot of emotion, Paula, and that's a lot of, God is like that. <laughs> he is longing to be with you, and he's longing to talk to you, and he's longing to hold you. He's longing to help you. He's longing to care for you. He's longing to give you the answers for what you need. Amen. I think she said it well. Um, Yeah, this is, um, the song is called I Miss My Time With You, and um, it is God speaking directly to you. So when you listen to these words um, of the song, um, just know that it's God speaking directly to your life. So just listen um, to what God has to say to you this morning. just waiting in our old familiar place an empty spot beside him where once I used to wait and to be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of the day I would have passed him by again But I clearly heard him say I miss my time with you Those moments together I need to be with you each day Well, it hurts me when you say You're too busy Busy trying to serve me But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you.
And what will I have to offer? And how can I truly care? My efforts have no meaning when your presence isn't there. But you will provide the power if I take time to pray. I'll stay right here beside him And you will never have to say I miss my time with you Those moments together I need to be with you each day And well it hurts me when you say You're too busy Busy trying to serve me But how, how can you serve me When your spirit's empty There's a longing in my heart Wanting more than just a part of you It's true I miss my time with you I miss my time with you All oh, those moments together I need to be with you each day Well, it hurts me when you say You're too busy Busy trying to serve me but how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. It's true. my time with you thank you Lord we stand we stand with us all across the house and I'd like to ask if all of the women of the house, not just mothers, but if all the women of the house could come and uh, come right around the front in this altar area, all the women all across the house to come forward and come right up around the front. If you're the first up, come right up to the steps, like squishy, squishy. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. When I was a little girl, when I was a teenager, I would listen to that song over and over and over and over again. Scrunchy, scrunchy, just up a little more. Scrunchy, 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 okay. <laughs> it says, like, I'm talking like teenager. I would listen to this song over and over. There he was just waiting in our old familiar place, an empty spot beside him where once I used to wait. To be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of the day, I would have passed him by again, but I clearly heard him say, and how often we pass by the Lord and he's calling out to us. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Will you lift your hands with me to Jesus? Not because I asked you, but if you asked me right now to go give Jerry a kiss, I'd rush down and do it. If you said, give Jerry a hug, I'd rush right down and do it. And if you say, lift your hands to Jesus, I rush right to do it. 
because I love Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Can we just tell the Lord that we love the Lord? We need you, Jesus. Come on, ladies. Let's just begin to tell the Lord what he means to us. And the areas you lack, he makes up in. And he's wanting to pour his spirit out into every inch of depression. He's wanting to pour his spirit out. And he's wanting to lift you up and hold you. He's doing that right now in the name of Jesus. He is picking you up right now. He is holding you in his arms and he is holding you right next to his heartbeat. He loves you. He compares you to no one. He loves you so much. He came on the cross for you. You are beautiful. You are awesome to him. He adores you. He gave his life to live for you that you would live. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, God, God, I just pray, Lord God, for these women, Lord. I pray that you would make them so radical. Not, not because their personality is loud or bold, God, but I pray, my God, they would make it. God, I've seen others that have quit on you. I've seen others give up on you. I've heard you call out over Jerusalem, God. And God, I've seen those that could care less about you, that don't want you. But don't let that be these women, Lord. God, I pray there be no part dark. Right now, let's just pray a cleansing over our own life. God, forgive me of all my sins. If you're a man, in the, a man in the room, this is not just for the women. God, forgive me of all my sins today, God. Anything I've said or done, God, wash my heart, God. Clean my life, God. Forgive me, God, of all my sins today, Jesus. Purify my heart, God, as I turn towards you. Oh, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. No part dark in me, God, no secrets. Come on, pray that over your own life, no part dark. Not even the littlest area. You have access to every area of my life, access in my mind, access in my will, access in my soul, access in my spirit, access to my heart, access to my words, access to my habits, access to my personality, access to my ways, God. No part dark, God, that your light illuminates every area. Search me, God. Search me, God. Search every area in me, God. Search out anything in me, God, that displeases you. Search out any area in me, God, that displeases you. And forgive me of that, God. Show me what it is, God. I yield to you, Jesus. 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 Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I yield to you, Lord. I yield to you, Lord. I yield to you, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. No part dark all the days of my life. No secrets, no secret areas, nothing hidden. Jesus. As your eyes are still closed. Right before, not long after he cried out, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, was the Passover and Just keep your eyes closed. Just be listening to Jesus. And he had the 12 meet for that supper together. And in that room was one that would betray him horribly with an intimacy of a kiss. And even when Jesus talked about it, the other disciples didn't know who he was talking about. It was hidden. 
Peter, he said, I'll never deny you. Jesus said, you will, and you'll do it three times. The Bible said Peter turned and wept bitterly after he had done that. But that day at the supper, there was one apostle, there, there were probably more, but one the Bible brings up, and his name was John. And the Bible says that he leaned over onto Jesus' breast. I know for a man, that's just his chest. But I want you to listen to me and what I'm going to tell you. There was one in the room that day that knew God was in the room. He didn't just think it was a good man or a good prophet. He knew Jesus was the Son of God. And when he leaned over onto Jesus' breast, he was saying, You are my supplier. You are my God. You are the one I need. It is in seeking him more and more and in being in his presence each day. And you must adopt it as your spiritual discipline. You must, you must, you must, or you'll die. You must, or you'll face a spiritual death. One day when you see Jesus, will I, will I dance in your presence? Will I fall down at your feet? But I want us all to pray a prayer together all across the house. All across the house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you in humility. I know you are God, and I know you want to hold me. I know you care about me. I know you love me. I know you'll always be there for me. So I humbly 
receive you. I confess my sins. Wash my heart. Be my God. Be my Lord. For all of my lifetime, I yield my life to you. I willingly yield my life to you. Bring healing to my life. Bring healing to my mind. And make me your daughter all the days of my life. I love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord praise all across the house. I love you, Lord. I give you praise today. I give you worship today. I adore you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Woo, hallelujah. It didn't help one iota that they have placed a clock on the back wall. <laughs> I pretended like I couldn't see it. <laughs> I hope if you're a mother, you have the best Mother's Day ever in the universe of Mother's Days. I hope my son has a happy birthday. <laughs> In July. <laughs> Don't make fun of me on that later, please. <laughs> so funny. Uh, listen to me one last time of listening. Pastor, Pastor Jerry and I have seen people that stood right where you stand. And they don't stand with Jesus anymore. I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm talking about they're just not with Jesus anymore. They couldn't make it through the trials. They couldn't make it through. It, I'm not sure all the reasons. But you must, must stay with Jesus. It doesn't matter how long you've served Jesus. And if what I'm saying right now is falling on deaf ears. I would never do that. We've counseled with many people who say, I would never do that. You must be people of prayer. You must be open vessels. No part dark in you. Nothing hidden from Jesus or even other people. And you must be people of the word. You must. You must. You must. There's not much I would tell you to do. But I'm telling you, <laughs> you must be people of the word. And if you say, I don't really like reading. It's not really my thing. It's not an excuse. Because I'm telling you today, you're getting ready to go eat food, aren't you? I am. I'm going to make baked spaghetti is what I'm making. Pastor Jerry asked for it. I'm going to eat. You must eat. Look, if you don't like reading, listen to it in the audio version. Watch it on YouTube. Listen to it somehow. Do that U version app. Listen to it. Get it in you. It'll guard you. It'll keep you away from sin. And it will help you make it to heaven. The devil cares nothing for you. You are just one of a number with him. And if he gets you to get out, who cares? But you're everything to God. You're everything to God. You're everything to God. I love you. Stay strong, myself included. <laughs> oh, oh, there's a bunch of you down here. Um, I hope, hope we made enough copies. What's in your hand, Pastor Jerry? What is that? Oh, it's a cupcake. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, 48's hit me kind of hard, hasn't it? <laughs> I, it is not in focus because I was crying. That's why I couldn't see what time it was when I run so late. <laughs> okay. They have a book. Um, it's, I had this idea for you last night, and it was, like, really late. And so we made as many copies as we could this morning. I hope there will be enough. It's for all women. Years ago, I wrote a devotional. Um, and last night when I was, I just opened a drawer and happened to see it and had the I didn't make copies and give that to them. So not the greatest writer on the planet, and there might be mistakes in it. But you're going to look over that. Like you look over me randomly telling people happy birthday when it's not their birthday. <laughs> but I believe maybe something in it might help you somehow, some way, maybe. So all of you have that. And then we have cupcakes. Now listen, last year we still had them. Today is not the day for you to be worrying about your diet. 
take one of those cupcakes and unwrap that thing and just ha, shove that right on in there. All right, because we bought them for you, and there's some water. Water is no milk. There's only water. So, I love you. Be strong in Jesus. You are my sisters. You are my sisters. You are my sisters. I love you and brothers and brothers. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy day. I love you. God bless you. Stay strong in Jesus. Stay strong in Jesus. Stay strong in Jesus.